Tesla has one of the most valuable electricity assets in the world. We often say, you know, Tesla's just a car company. How the hell can its stock price be worth 300 US dollars? That's more than the rest of the top 10 car makers in the world. That is ludicrous. All they do is make cars. That is not true. In fact, Tesla will make possibly billions of dollars being an energy retailer. This is happening. And bizarrely, Jim Cramer and everyone else, all these other Muppets on talking heads on television, have just ignored these assets that Tesla have. They've ignored the fact that Tesla has one of the most valuable assets in the world, and it's future-proofed in a number of ways. In fact, the ability to create its own energy, sell it to EV drivers, sell it back to the grid, and to sell it at premium prices with almost no operating fees, this kind of a situation really would be the envy of any large business in the world. These assets are literally worth billions of dollars. If this is the future of EVs and of charging, I think this future's damn amazing. I mean, imagine rocking up to a supercharger, right? Or a, a, a fast charger to charge your electric car and knowing none of the power is coming from coal, none of the power is coming from gas, no nuclear, it's coming from a solar farm that's like right there. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. Great to have you with us. You're watching The Electric Viking. Guys, I'll be at the Indonesian EV conference called Periklindo. I'll put a link in the description below. If you'd like to attend, it'll be on this weekend. Tesla has opened a 168 stall supercharger station. It's got its own solar farm. And as I've mentioned before, several times on this channel, some reason people ignored this for a couple of years, Tesla has been quietly doing something that is game changing, essentially becoming an energy company. In fact, Tesla is an energy company, of course. But imagine this, this setting, right? Imagine you own thousands and thousands of gas stations around the world and the gasoline is free. That's the situation Tesla is in. Tesla is printing money for nothing. Now, of course, you've got to build the infrastructure. Building this, building all this out is costing Tesla money, but it will print the money in the future because what Tesla is able to do is utilize what is essentially free solar. During the middle of the day and at certain periods during the night, solar electricity is either free or in, in fact, sometimes <clears throat> you can actually, the grid will pay you to, like, to take electricity from the network because there's too much power in the network because of all the the extra solar being manufactured or being created during the middle of the day. So what Tesla can do, because they've installed these huge batteries underneath or at the locations of their superchargers, those mega batteries soak up all that near free or free or literally um, being paid to take it energy and then they charge a massively premium price. This is what all superchargers do. All charging companies charge a very, very premium price generally about probably five times more expensive than you'd pay for electricity, depending on the time of day. Of course, that can fluctuate. So Tesla, they have opened uh, Australia's largest solar canopy with an 80 kilowatt solar array. And the company has shared news of this, uh, also a but massive site in the United States with 11 megawatts of solar, uh, both in the solar canopies above the superchargers and also a nearby solar farm, along with 10 Tesla Megapack batteries. So far, 84 charges have opened to the public, but they will have 168 of them. If you're curious to know exactly how big these Tesla Megapacks actually are, putting 10 at one locations, uh, it's almost impossible Tesla's actually gonna need to use the grid, right? Each Tesla Megapack is 3.9 megawatt hours. Um, and they can provide 1.9 megawatts of continuous power output. So if Tesla have just built 10 or put 10 megapacks at this one supercharger location where there's 168 chargers, that means there is 39 megawatt hours of electricity. And it can put out, basically these 10 batteries can put out 19 megawatt of continuous electrical power. That is 19,000 kilowatt. Uh, 
9,000, 10,000 kilowatt of electricity that Tesla can send into EVs at any one point in time. In total, the amount of total stored energy in kilowatt hours is 39,000 kilowatt hours. Massive, right? So the question is, how many EVs can Tesla charge? Not from the solar, let's just exclude the solar entirely. Let's just pretend Tesla's just using the batteries, which is obviously not gonna be the case, except for at nighttime. But let's just pretend Tesla's just using the batteries, 10 Tesla mega packs, continuous power output of 19,000 kilowatt, means that if you charged every EV at 200 kilowatt, which you wouldn't, because a lot of them wouldn't charge at that pace, but let's say all of them at 200 kilowatt continuously, Tesla could be charging 95 electric cars at the same time at 200 kilowatt at the one single location. However, charging at that pace, you'd only be able to com continue charging nonstop at 200 kilowatt for two hours. Realistically, that's never going to happen. Tesla's not going to have 100 EVs at that point, charging at 200 kilowatt nonstop constantly. So Tesla would probably get about six hours, meaning, you know, Tesla would have to have enormous numbers of cars charging at the same time in order to use all of that available battery capacity during darkness, right? When there's no sun shining. Now, of course, during the day, the sun's gonna be shining. It's gonna be continuously topping up those batteries. In other words, it's almost, in other words, it's extremely unlikely Tesla is ever going to need to use grid electricity to charge any of those EVs. But this is only the beginning because what Tesla is actually doing is it's installing Pika plants all around the world. And Pika plants charge more for electricity than power plants do. Now, Pika plants are like the low hanging fruit, right? So guys, when you get home from work, it's 5 p.m., 6 p.m. In California, this is an issue. In Australia, it's an issue. Many, in, in fact, everywhere in the world, it's an issue. People get home from work, the sun stops shining, and all of a sudden everyone turns their air conditioners on, or the heat is on, or whatever it is. They plug in their EVs, whatever, everything. And that happens right when the sun goes down. So what Tesla will do is simply optimize these mega pack batteries that they've installed at all these supercharger locations all around the world to send electricity back into the grid when electricity is really, really expensive. So between 5 to 7 p.m. So for those two hours of the day, Tesla will probably discharge around 50% of the electricity in their batteries and be able to make millions of dollars within a couple of hours every day. Every day, Tesla can make money from nothing. This concept has really never existed in the past. I mean, when you, got it, when you think about the model of Netflix or Disney, they require subscribers, right? And it's great to have subscribers paying you money every month and you're getting a consistent $20 off each person. You get millions of, millions of subscribers, but you've got to provide content, right? Everything that people subscribe to, actually, the company's got to do something, got to continue to, to spend money on it. But here's the thing, when Tesla have built out these locations and they're constantly doing it, of course, it's not a, it's a moving target, but when they've built out a certain location, they don't need to spend any more money. Those solar panels, they now have a warranty of 30 years. Those batteries have a warranty of 30 years. In other words, Tesla has the ability to print money for 30 years. And this ignores the fact that subscribers are paying non-Tesla owners and Tesla owners are paying, many of them are paying subscription fees as part of the Tesla Supercharged Network. In fact, I shouldn't say Tesla owners, non-Tesla owners pay a subscription fee to be part of the Tesla network and they pay more for charging. In addition to the subscription fees that Tesla charges, they also charge every time someone uses their superchargers. So the location of this new supercharger and solar farm and mega pack battery farm it's actually located in Lost Hills in California. That's on the Interstate 5 between San Francisco and Los Angeles, which according to Tesla is one of the busiest EV corridors in the world. I can, uh, I can agree with that. I drove that corridor in October of last year and it was great. I love driving on those roads. The site will eventually have 168 V4 supercharger stalls. Those superchargers can charge at up to 450 kilowatt. That will mean it might, it'll be one of the top five biggest charging sites in the world. On Tesla's charging page on X, the company shared the news of the site. They said it took around eight months to complete in time for the 4th of July holidays when tens of thousands of EVs are expected to be on the move and Tesla can start making some money back. 
On Tesla's website, the site can be a set accessed between 10 a.m. and 8 p.m. every day with base rate charging for EVs at 62 cents per kilowatt hour. My guess is Tesla probably would pay. I mean, obviously, they're getting a lot of the electricity going to these batteries that's free, but they might pay around an average of 5 to 10 cents per kilowatt hour. The markup is astronomical. These sites are also open to EVs that use a NAX charging plug, or you can get a NAX charging plug adapter and use the EVs anyway. Each of the V4 supercharger stalls are rated at 325 kilowatt, but they have the potential to hit 450 kilowatt according to Tesla's actual hardware. What's on the ground is kind of interesting, right? There is actually 30 acres of land. 12 of the 84 stalls are pull through, meaning EV drivers towing trailers, caravans, etc., can drive through them. The remainder of the 188, 168 stalls will be open later on this year. And interestingly, the opening of this site comes only days after Tesla announced it had installed its 70,000th 70, 70, supercharger site globally with the opening of its new 12 stall site in Texas, in Burleson, Texas. That news came only eight months after Tesla said it rolled out its 60,000th supercharger in Japan. So Tesla has built 10,000 superchargers worldwide in the last eight months alone. And that's a kind of considered to be a slowdown for Tesla. I think when we, we value Tesla's stock price, and people often, it's very common, especially on websites like Electric, they say Tesla's stock is massively overblown. It's a joke. It's a total nightmare for investors. It's going to crash. It's going to be worth, you know, some people are saying Tesla's going to go bankrupt. But a lot of people just say they're only a car company and they just sell cars. But here's the thing. Their energy division is growing at an incredibly fast pace, much faster than their, of course, than their car division, and it's taken up a larger and larger share of the business. But that's simply deployment of big batteries and energy modules like power walls around the world. We all keep forgetting, I even do as well, that Tesla is actually an energy distri distributor. And it has a big advantage over the other energy distributors because it has no coal power, it owns its own assets, and its own assets can be used for multiple purposes, whether that's charging EVs or sending electricity back into the network when it's cheap. It's an enormous advantage that no one else actually has. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Bye-bye.